and the messages just keep coming and coming and coming. Uh, Juku Michelle on Twitter says, I hope Mr. Shore is aware that real Donald Trump was widely rejected both on social media and on the street, but still went ahead to win. Uh, this young man has been out in Niger for almost 19 years. I doubt he even knows how much about the present happening besides social media stories. He also said, I hope he realizes there's a big difference between activism and ruling. We all are aware of this former friend, Mr. Activism turned legislator whose only achievement in his constituency is less than five meter wooden bridge. And I also advise uh, Gwen Ishawara to continue his activism and leave politics to politician. Uh, that's someone who is coming really hard. Uh, this is fine. There. And uh, well, apparently someone is taking it very seriously and wondering what your agenda for the nation's health sector is. Uh, what's your magic wand to attain universal health coverage? How mm -hmm. would you increase the national health insurance scheme coverage from the present 3% since inception in 2005? Mm -hmm. What options would you use for health care financing? Dr. Henry Ewunonu, uh, just to look at some of them. And mm -hmm. uh, me from Kuk. Kuye or Kujay, I'm sure you meant to say Kujay, says uh, we're solidly behind you. Please ask your guest, what is he going to do to convince me that it's not going to be a story as usual, going by some of the stories published by his online uh, media, Sahara Reporters, only to become untrue. For instance, Sahara Reporters were the first online media to report that Senator Dino had fled the country only for Dino to show up the following day. So how can I believe you, sir? Uh, Mr. P from uh, Central Business District. Uh, Upata from Central Area says social media isn't a proper yardstick to measure the president's popularity. It doesn't capture a majority of the water or refuse vendors, the headsmen, rural workers, peasants, etc. Even the few captured ones are hardly internet savvy. Many of them would still cast their votes like the enlightened minority who are active on social media. Again, don't use Jonathan to judge Buhari's disposition to INEC. They are two different beings with different background, orientation, character, worldview, etc. For instance, Buhari was part of a revolution. His military orientation makes him believe he can always have his way. However, PDP was busy looting and did nothing about the ways electoral reform recommendation would prescribe the president from appointing INEC boss. How neutral can the boss really be under this circumstance? So Pata has so much of his thoughts yeah. wrapped up uh, in that message. The messages are quite much. Uh, Sarah, all the way at last, I have who to vote for. Reason is because I know where to hit him if he fails me later. Super B from Karma. I wish I know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows something a lot of us might not know uh, uh, at the moment. I, I can go on with your messages. Quite a, uh, greetings to Mr. Shore. My best wishes. I have a question for you. I have come to understand that you are against restructuring. If so, why? Mm. I need a president that would restructure this country. Tony Top. Uh, sent that one in. Uh, please, I don't think Mr. Shower is ripe enough to be Nigeria's president. Let him start from the grassroots. UG, local government chairman, councillor, or governor. Uh, let's see how far he can go. Nigerian presidential ticket is not for novice, it's not a ground for experimentation. Abbas from Duse uh, sent uh, that one in. And, you know, just a few, before yeah. we, we talk on the phone lines, yes. uh, any quick response to this? Because it might get. Yes, I, I, you know, there are a lot of questions, and the fact that people are really interested in, you know, getting in all these questions in and comments in shows that something's happening, and I love that. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I just have to start with restructuring to clear the air that I'm not against restructuring. What I have said, and I'll repeat here again for record, I mean, on record, is that I am not going to restructure Nigeria based on the views of people who were restructuring Nigeria into their pockets, you know, so we know them. The current proponents of restructuring are the same people who collected 100 million naira from Jonathan when Nigeria was in the doldrums and they didn't have any plans with it. So they want to restructure Nigeria now that maybe money is not coming in. I'm saying that the first restructuring that has to happen in Nigeria is economic. The Nigerians must be empowered. They must, they must be served with the fullest potential of the resources in the country to them and not a few. And after that happens, we are going to determine what we accept and reject of the Nigerian constitution, including, I have said it and I'll say it again, I'm not afraid to say it, that I think the current political structure is burdensome. Uh, maybe Nigeria doesn't even need uh, a bicameral legislature. You know, I don't want to have senators that are You're collecting quite a lot on. Yes, you know, but you know, so so I'm coming to this 
as a revolutionary politician, uh, and I hate to use the word politician because it's, it has a bad connotation because they are career thieves that are, uh, you know, but you know, most of them are, and I'm not afraid to say it. I, I actually have to document their lives every day. Mm -hmm. I haven't found too many of them who are not, you know, but a few of them, and hopefully Nigeria can get to understand and work with those ones. So. All of these are requiring that we do something about our constitution. The constitution we have now was drafted by the military. They just inserted this very fraudulent word, we the people. It's just a few politicians who wrote the constitution and they dubbed from the 1979 constitution and it became the 1989 constitution and then uh, whatever it is we have now didn't have the input of the people. It didn't reflect the fact that when they drafted the constitution, there was no massive technology that we have now. So the world has changed that we need to rejig our constitution to reflect the current realities of life. Somebody also mentioned how, you know, whether I will stick to where I am or whether I'm sounding like a politician. I've never been a politician and I've ever, ever, since 30 years ago, I started as an activist when I was barely 19 years old. And the duty at that point was to drive the military out of power. And I did my duties alongside others to do that and deliver on democracy. When they brought out time, I did my duties to make sure it didn't happen. When they brought a sick person as president of Nigeria, I did my duty that the man next to him, you know, uh, was constitutionally sworn in. When the man messed up, I did my duty as a Nigerian to ensure that we have a transition to program, you know, from one party to the other. That's never happened before. And when the man turned out to be as clueless as the last one, we didn't waste time in writing them off and ensuring that we put this nation in a different direction. But I don't want to, what I don't want to do is to go in a direction that is helping to elect mediocres and thieves into office. You know, that's why I say, oh, you know, Sarah Reporters has broken the story, somebody won again. No, I want to throw myself out there and be able to help change this country. It's not me alone. This is a movement. I invite all young people. And for those ones who are saying that you need to become counselors, I'm sorry that, you know, I understand why they feel that way. The self-esteem of an average Nigerian has been so beaten and battered that they've been told that they are not good. They can't be class captains. So when they see a young person who is not the son of a former governor, or president throwing himself up to say, look, I'm competent. They don't... They, it's they, not about the, yeah. being young. It's about yeah. experience also. Oh, what I'm saying is that the experience that's been running this country, what is it? Experience in stealing, you know, killing, assassination, and mismanagement. That's the experience they have. I don't have that kind of experience. Let me tell you, and this what might sound like... What experience do you have? I have experience in, you know, I have experience, I've, I've created, funded a world-class media company that has disrupted the media space in this country. Nobody argues with that. You know, when I first started Sahara Reporters Inside Country, the first thing I did so that I can justify my proposal to pay 100,000 is to make sure that every person that's working with me is not paid less than 100,000 Naira. Even though the Senate President went and got a Jankara judgment in his state to seize our assets, we are still paying our workers nothing less than 100,000. I'm not going to disclose how. And I found out that that's not even enough for them. So when I propose to you that we want to pay Nigerian workers 100,000, I mean it, that is possible. We've done our research and found that it will only add 1.3 trillion naira to the wage bill of the federal government. That is less than how much politicians are stealing every month. An average state governor gets 300 million naira as security votes. And you have never heard before that it's never been paid. But they cannot pay workers that 18,000. So how about we take the security votes away from them and pay workers who actually come to work? You know, I want to purge the federal uh, staff strength of ghost workers. There are 21% of Nigerian workers that are ghost workers, including 80,000 from Nigerian police, as you just found out recently. And after you take 80,000 out of the Nigerian police of about 320,000 staff strength, you have half of them running after girlfriends and, you know, of all these criminals. We want to get them back to the crime beat so that they can protect the Nigerian people, so that they can be in Benway, they are mobile, not mobile to kill as the slightest provocation, but mobile to prevent crime. These are the things that are the goodies that we have that are coming to the Nigerian people. Oh. You just have to have belief and you have to join hands with us. Everything that I promised I would do as a young person, till today I did it. Mm -hmm. When I said that I would fight corruption with my blood, I fought it. When I was in the university, 
I promised that I would fight the government and when young people like me, when it was cool to be a cultist, I didn't join them, I fought them just to liberate the university environment from gangsterism. So, but most people don't, you see, our biggest problem is that young people have institutional memory. I'm sorry, I'm not insulting them. People who were not born in 1990, 93, they cannot understand me. And most of the people who are on Twitter today were born in 1990, in the 90s. You know, I only knew their parents when I started out. They don't understand me now because there's no even history taught in our educational system. They probably would never read about me. What they read about me is the 140 characters that they see on Twitter. And sometimes they want to feel cool by abusing everybody, including Wale Shoyinka. You know, nobody's safe, you know, on, on, uh, on Twitter fair. But that is not to say that there are no Nigerians. I'm, and I'm not the only one, by the way, who can do this. Uh, it would be stupid of me to think that way. But the right environment that can produce good people that can run this country has never existed. If it takes me to bring that out, and I love the fact that all these young people are coming out uh, who have never been, who have never tasted, you know, uh, blood, it's great. Nigeria needs to go in a different direction. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name, my name is Mo. I'm calling from Mumbai. All right, Mo, straight to the point. Uh, I just want to ask Mr. Mingza one simple question. Uh, how many years or how many months will it take you to fix power when you get to power? All right. Thank you very much. Hello? Oops. Hello? Uh-oh. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, I want to What's your name? say a big thank you to your guest. What's your name? My name is Epada Mokukun, I'm calling from Kobwa. Okay. You have my vote already, Mr. Shawa, eh? Thank you. I have been following you and sitting there for a long time. And it will be a fool for any youth in Nigeria today to queue up to vote for anybody over 50 years <laughs> or 50 years again in this country. You have my vote, I will even brand my car to campaign for you. You are welcome. Thank you, fantastic. All right. Uh, hello. Hello. You're welcome. Yeah, Tim, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Yeah, uh, my name is Lazarus. Go ahead, 30 seconds. Yeah, I so much appreciate your guest there. Uh, uh, until we realize that um, our former leader has failed us. The issue of experience does not matter. What matters is that you have a vision and a mission and you are ready to deliver. Our leaders who has experience, where has they led us mm. to? What is the outcome of their so-called experience? That's right, yeah. All right. The outcome is Luther. <laughs> okay, I think we get your point. Hello. Hello, good evening. Welcome. I'm Guru, good evening. Invention of Okay, he is yeah. listening. So, um, my, I think my concern your is the experience of our reporters going forward. Hello, my name is Bashir. I'm calling from Lokoboma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my, my concern is now the fairness of Sahara to the Sahara reporters going forward. Because uh, I, I believe that there's a conflict of interest now that it's contesting for president. Are we now going to be taking his words to the back again? Because mm -hmm. anything we see from our reporters might be what you call it, seem to be in their towards supporting is presidential ambition rather than being neutral and being fair to Nigeria. So I think I'm very much concerned as he resigned, what apparatus has been put in place to separate himself from Sahara reporters. But even all his coverage and even the way Sahara reporters even now covers his movement, I think it's outrageous that uh the presidential people have stumped Abuja done this. I think they are over emphasizing what you want. So I don't I just want to know should we now long should we no longer trust Sahara reporters again? Thank you. All right, uh, I'm afraid for time we can't take any more. So, yeah, I will answer that of Sahara reporters because there's a lot of concern. You know, I can we do all of this in four minutes? Yes, why not? I okay. Sahara reporters will continue to be a fame. In fact, Sahara reporters has reported my activity at least since I started the press. And what they are repeating is what other media platforms have been reporting. You know, uh, maybe our friends should be more worried about NTA and Radio Nigeria and the way they are, you know, amplifying and hyper inflating the what of the president other than me i have not worked in sahara products for a while but i have not i'm working on transferring 
my interest in the, in the company to a blind trust. That's going to happen. Okay. Uh, so there's nothing to worry about. So Harry Potter will continue to be a fair and balanced and hard hitting platform, including, you know, uh, hitting me as fat as uh, hard as it is. Somebody asked a very important question about how long does it take to put in power. You know, I sat on a plane with a solar energy expert in the US and he told me to have five megawatts of electricity take 90 days. 90 days. You just bring in the products and you assemble and that can power a polytechnic or university and the surrounding villages around it. But it's not cheap. But I would rather take that money and give it to people who need it than allow it to be given to people who steal it. So there are technologies today. Look, when we were protesting in 2008, 12 over our subsidies. Dangote had not laid the foundation for his refinery. By next year, it will go on stream. And Nigeria has not been able to build even a modular refinery. And we know that the only way we can solve the gasoline crisis or the energy crisis from the petroleum sector was to build refineries in this country. You know, but also, oil has become a lazy economy. So we have to go towards renewable energy. We can use solar energy based on the sunshine that is happening in Abuja alone to generate 4,000 megawatts of electricity. They did it in Tunisia and they are now selling power to Malta, France and another company. You need company. money to do all of these things. What is right? money? Money that you don't steal. Do you know that the oil subsidy thieves stole $26 billion? The same amount of money that China used to build the fastest train between uh, Beijing and Zengo. Have you heard about that? Well, I'm hearing from you now. Yes, because I'm, I'm here with facts. I'm not making up stories. So the same thing. Uh, so there's also a question about, you know, uh, I think somebody raised something about power. Yes, I, I just answered that health. Health is very important. But here is what we do about health, see, right? You know, the, you, people are already paying deductions right now in, within their salaries for health. You know what happened in the national uh, the, in the NHIS. They one day went and withdrew over $10 billion. Nobody has been able to explain it. Do you know how much $10 billion can do to the health of just primary health care that it can build in every city and town, you know, increase our health? Uh, but you are, if you are thinking about health and you are worried, how about the presidency that has $3 billion naira to spend on Asso Rock Clinic? And there's no syringe there. Yeah. I didn't make this up. This is the wife of the president that said it. But, you know, it will not happen under my watch that we'll spend $3 billion naira on the Asura clinic and you can't have, you can't have syringe there. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish we could just go on and on, but we're pressed for But, that. you but know, we, we, I just want to say also that, you know, I would do what they did in India. There are plenty of Nigerian professionals there, experts, who can be brought back to this country to come and rescue the health sector. That is the reason why we go to India today. Interesting. Finally, uh, yes. no room for independent candidacy. So under what party are you going to ride? Coalition of parties. We are not doing independent candidacy. There are discussions going on. Are you the third person? Oh my God, you, you, are, you are now insinuating that, you know, I can become nucleated <laughs> <laughs> on your show. Don't let me throw up. I can okay. never have anything to do with thought first. So coalition of parties. Yes, there are a lot of new parties, young, missionary, yeah, I mean, mission-driven, visionary leaders mm. in new parties that we are talking to. So we'll come out with a grand coalition that will be very digital. All right. Yes. I will look forward to that and see how this coalition of parties will go. Thank you, Kimberly. I wish you the very best. Thank you. Okay.